Hey guys and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. Now, in this episode I want to talk about something that I hear a lot during workshops. What monitor should I buy? What should I do with the monitor? Should I calibrate the monitor? Man, it's confusing for a lot of people, but it's actually very simple. Remember that if you have a very expensive camera, you have great images, right? But you want to see those images, you want to retouch those images. And that's where a monitor comes in. Now, as you can see, I have three monitors set up, but I'm not using all three monitors. I have my main monitor, that's a 27 inch, and I'm now testing the new BenQ 24 inch, and I'm gonna talk about it later, and it's an awesome monitor. <coughs> and I'm actually using one on top. Now the one on top is not actually used as a monitor. It's where I stream TV shows, because during retouching I love to watch TV shows, like National Geographic, The Learning Channel, and of course Discovery. Now, these two monitors, that's where it's really all about. I use those two as follows. On the first one, I run Photoshop or Final Cut. On the second one, I run all the presets, like the tools, uh, presets, programs, and of course, my email. Now, why BenQ and ISO next to each other? Well, if you want a really good monitor, you should buy a monitor that has an Adobe RGB color space. That's a very wide color space. Now, your camera actually captures in an even wider color space. But a lot of monitors out there only show you sRGB. It's a very limited color space. Adobe RGB is a lot bigger and at this point the best monitors you can get are the Adobe RGBs. Now the BenQ, it's a really affordable monitor. It's below 1000 euros. The ISO is slightly above 2200 euros. But it's a 27 inch and this is a 24 inch. And BenQ actually will be releasing a 27 inch very soon. Now, if you buy your monitor, make sure you invest a little bit of extra money. And I would really advise the BenQ series at this point because they really give you a lot of bang for your buck. Now, now that you have the monitor, you have this little formula with it, right? Or sorry, a paper that said it's calibrated according to the standards of Adobe RGB. And you have all these numbers and DE values and deltas and whatever. And it's really confusing the heck out of you. That's correct, because it's all numbers, right? But in essence, it doesn't mean a thing. The only thing that it means is in the factory, they used a calibration tool to see if the monitor is up to spec. Don't trust it. Don't just put your monitor there and say, hey, I have a calibrated monitor. Here's the report. No, it's not like that. Every video card, every computer is different. Every monitor is different. So when you connect your computer to your monitor, you have to recalibrate. Now, there are two different ways to recalibrate. One is using software that comes delivered with your color analyzer. Now, what's a color analyzer? Well, it's a device like this. This is an x rite <coughs> It's actually the iOne Pro display. Now, you put this in front of your monitor. Take away, of course, the diffusion cap. Put it in front of your monitor. You press a button and the software runs and it does a calibration, meaning red will be red, green will be green and blue will be blue. It's very simplified, of course. And well, after that, you will have a proper calibrated monitor, right? But that's via the software that's delivered with the analyzer. There's also another way, and that's via a so-called hardware LUT table. Now, that LUT table is very difficult to understand, so I will simplify it. You can use software, or you can use the monitor itself. And they call that hardware calibration. In my opinion, it's very important to buy a monitor that has hardware calibration options inside. Because then you get actually a higher resolution. Now, how can I explain that? Now, let me see. Normally, when you look at, for example, a curve, and you have a very low resolution, you will see it like this, like blocks. If you have a higher resolution, you will actually see it like a line. And that's how the graduations in your calibration will operate on a hardware calibrated monitor. So it will be more fine controlled. Let's keep it that way. It will be more fine, so better. Now, there are also different kinds of analyzers. So which one should you buy? Because that's even, maybe even more difficult than buying a monitor, right? Well, you can buy cheaper ones like these. These are actually uh, based on a tree stimulus meter, meaning there are gels inside for all the colors. And there are many different types. They are relatively cheap. The other ones are relatively more expensive. And those are the so-called spectrometers. Like this one is a color monkey also from x right This is my favorite one. Now, what is a spectrometer? A gel-based meter, and I'll, again, I will very, very simplify it. 
let's say this is the whole spectrum and red is a peak like here. Now a gel based meter will have gels covering certain areas of the spectrum, for example red, green and blue. Again this is very simplified. Now let's say that red falls exactly in that gel filter, no problem. But let's say red is a little bit shifted and it's outside of the gel, meaning the gel actually only measures, let's say, ab above half the peak. And there's a lot of red that's still outside that gel. Now there are a lot of software calibrations of course for this and a lot of other stuff, but in essence it's a gel based meter. A spectrometer doesn't work with set points for RGB, it just meters the whole spectrum. So if red is really shifted, let's say towards the right, the spectrometer will meter it correctly. The gel based meter can make a mistake. And these are also much more sensitive. Now you bought an analyzer six years ago, you tell me? Throw them away, because those analyzers won't work anymore, sorry guys. These meters will approximately work for about a year and a half. So the three stimulus meters, a year and a half, and then you have to buy a new one. These ones, well, they can work a little bit longer, let's say three or four years. And one of the things that's nice about the spectrometer is every time before you do the calibration, you do a dark reading. Don't do it off your hand, of course, but use a, something that's delivered with it or just put it on the table and let it do a hardware dark reading, meaning it will make sure that everything is into specs. You can of course send in the meters to your supplier, like for example X-Rite, and let them do a recalibration. But in my opinion the meters are not that expensive, so for the three stimulus meters just wait one year and a half and buy a new one. The other question I get from a lot of people, why should I calibrate Frank? Because all my clients they don't use calibrated monitors. And yeah, th that's absolutely true and it's a shame of course that they don't use those, me uh, those calibrated monitors. But remember this, when everybody calibrates their monitor and your client has a monitor that has 20% too much blue, all his images will have 20% too much blue, right? So he is used to that look. So if he sees an image that is from a proper calibrated monitor, he will see, okay, this image is right. Now you deliver your images and let's say your monitor has 20% less blue. So his monitor has 20% too much blue, your monitor has 20% less blue. And you don't calibrate because pff, your client doesn't calibrate, right? Now he sees those images and he goes like, that doesn't look right. He doesn't know what's wrong but it doesn't look right. And that's correct because actually he has too little blue in his image. So although your client doesn't use a calibrated monitor, he is used to that look. So make sure as a professional or amateur photographer that you calibrate your monitor. Now before you watch all the other videos on my YouTube channel, <laughs> I want to run through the settings with you very fast. Now every monitor, when you calibrate it, you have to set certain points in your calibration software, right? Now Anna Week will mention them on the screen while I call them out. As a white point, I always select D65 or 6500 degrees Kelvin. As a gamma I use 2.2 and as light output, and this is very personal, I always switch between 120 and 130 CDM. And you can find that in your software. Now there's something else you have to remember. You also in some software can select the ICC profiling. Make sure if you have any problems at Photoshop and Lightroom that when you export from Lightroom to Photoshop and your images look different, or you go from Capture One to Lightroom and your images look different. If that happens to you, make sure that the next time you calibrate, you choose ICC Profiling version 2. If you don't have any problems and the images look fine in all, you can experiment with ICC Profiling version 4. But to be honest, I always put it on version 2 because I know that works 100% and the version 4 sometimes has some problems. So calibrating D6500, Gamma 2.2, 120 to 130 CDM light output and ICC profiling version 2. Now good luck with calibrating your monitor and make sure all the colors look correct. So you guys now go out and buy a monitor or you already have a monitor. 
Now dig up that analyzer because I know for sure that a lot of people that are now watching haven't calibrated their monitor in a long time because that's the final tip I'm going to give you. How often should you calibrate your monitor? Believe it or not, every week. And what I actually do is before every important assignment, before I start retouching, I will calibrate the monitor. And one final thing about that, make sure that you warm up your monitor. For example, 30 minutes, it's a good starting point. So after 30 minutes, you use the analyzer and you calibrate your monitor. Now about the difference between the BenQ and many different monitors out there that have a built-in calibrator. Remember what I told you about the lifespan of a calibration tool, right? Like the color analyzers, they will go for about a year and a half. Your monitor will actually survive more than a year and a half. So if you have a monitor that uses a tree stimulus meter, like the ISO for example, in one year and a half, that tree stimulus meter will actually go down in quality. So what do you do? Well, that's a problem and it's something I also asked ISO and they didn't have a real good response. The BenQ doesn't have a built-in calibrator. So you have to use a third-party calibrator. Now, the software that BenQ uses is compatible with most X-Rite analyzers. So the main advantage is because you have the software and the hardware calibration inside the monitor but you use a separate analyzer, is that if your analyzer isn't good anymore or needs recalibration, you just switch out the analyzer and you keep a very well stable and well calibrated monitor. And price wise again, BenQ is a really good bang for the buck. So make sure you check them out and thank you for watching and see you next time.